The Jacob Schmidt Brewing Company, is the name of a former brewing company that was located at 882 West 7th Street in St. Paul, Minnesota. Founded in 1855 the brewery was originally known as the Christopher Stallman, Cave Brewery, its name was changed to its final name in 1900. History of ownership Christopher Stallman, Cave Brewery 1855 Christopher Stallman Brewing Co., 1882–1898 St. Paul Brewing Co., 1898–1900 Jacob Schmidt Brewing Company 1900 Pfeiffer Brewing Co., Jacob Schmidt Brewing Company 1954–1962 Associated Brewing Company Pfeiffer, Schmidt 1962–1972 G. Heilman Brewing Company, 1972 to 1990. Minnesota Brewing Company, 1991 to 2002. Gopher State Ethanol, occupied parts of brewery, 2000 to 2004. Schmidt Artist Lofts, from 2013. Topic: Christopher Stallman Cave Brewery. Though Stallman's Cave Brewery was not one of the founding breweries in Minnesota nor St. Paul for that matter, it quickly became the largest in the state producing 1,200 barrels annually by 1860, exporting his lager as far as Tennessee. In 1879 the Stallman Brewery was capable of producing 25,000 barrels annually and became the first brewers to sell more than 10,000 barrels in Minnesota along with being one of the first brewers to bottle his own beer. Stallman succumbed to tuberculosis on December 2, 1883, leaving the company to his three sons Henry Conrad Gottlieb the eldest, Bernhard the middle, and Christopher Adam John the youngest. All of whom would suffer the same fate as their father within the next decade, Henry on May 2, 1887, Bernhard on July 3, 1887 and Christopher on December 27, 1893. Without the experience of these well-trained men the company would never again find success. In 1898 the company was restructured as the St. Paul Brewing Co. St. <laughs> Paul Brewing Co. A short-lived venture lasting less than three years, the company formed with the dissolution of the Christopher Stallman Brewing Co. After the deaths of Stallman males. At the time of Christopher Stallman and his three sons' deaths the grandchildren were all too young to operate the brewery. By 1898 the job had fallen on Christopher Stallman's oldest son Henry's, widow Anna's second husband Frank Nicolin. Frank Nicolin was a wealthy business man from Jordan, Minnesota owning much of the town. After the death of his first wife he met the widow Anna Mitch Stallman and they shortly after married at this time he moved his affairs to St. Paul and took over the Stallman Brewing Company and renamed it the St. Paul Brewing Company. Though Frank was a man with a head for business the new company was met with little success. In 1900 the brewery and all its holdings were sold to Jacob Schmidt who after suffering a fire at his own North Star Brewery was looking for a suitable site to rebuild. Jacob Schmidt Brewing Company Jacob Schmidt started his brewing career in Minnesota as the brewmaster for Theodore Hams Brewing Company. He left this position to become owner of the North Star Brewing Co. Under Schmidt's new leadership the small brewery would see much success. In 1899 Schmidt transferred partial ownership of his new brewery to a new corporation, headed by his son-in-law Adolf Bremer, and Adolf's brother Otto. This corporation would later become Bremer Bank. With the new partnership the Jacob Schmidt Brewing Company was established. In 1900 the North Star Brewery suffered a fire that closed it for good, so the firm purchased the Stallman Brewery from the St. Paul Brewing Co. 
It constructed a new Romanesque brewery, incorporating parts of Stallman's original brewery and further excavating the lagering cellars used in the fermentation process to create Schmidt's lager beer. Upon Schmidt's death in 1911 the Bremers took full control of the company and continued to see success and growth. In 1920 national prohibition came to Minnesota, stopping the production and sale of intoxicating beverages. Schmidt's was one of few breweries to remain open all throughout Prohibition by offering non-alcoholic beverages or near beers such as Malta and City Club as well as other beverages. It was rumored that Schmidt's continued to produce real beer during Prohibition, using a secret underground tunnel to transport beer from the brewery on the bluffs to waiting ships on the Mississippi River below. None of these rumors were ever confirmed, because Schmitz had continued producing beverages, it was one of the few breweries in Minnesota that was ready to produce real beer when Prohibition was lifted in 1933. Schmitz re-released City Club Beer as a strong beer with the new slogan, Tops in any town. Schmitz saw widespread success and continued to grow. This success brought attention to the Bremer family, leading to the kidnapping of Edward Bremer by the Barker Carpus Gang on January 16, 1934. He was released on February 7 of the same year after a $200,000 ransom. By 1936 Schmitz had become the seventh largest brewery in the country. It decided to offer City Club in flat-top cans like hams. Schmitz later switched back to cone-top cans. Thanks to a long-standing friendship between the Bremers and Franklin D. Roosevelt, Schmitz was granted a contract from the government to supply beer to the troops. On Otto Bremer's death in 1951, City Club beer began to be phased out. In 1954, stiff competition convinced the Bremers to leave the brewing industry. The company was sold to Detroit-based brewer Pfeiffer. Topic. Pfeiffer Brewing Co., an associated brewing company As City Club beer was removed from the market Schmidt beer was introduced, its acceptance helped greatly by the introduction of the Scenicken series. Between 1947 and 1958 185 breweries either closed or sold to larger companies, this time was known as the Great Shakeout. It was during this time that Pfeiffer acquired Schmidt as well as many other smaller regional breweries. Without a strong national brand to sell, Pfeiffer relied on multiple brands that had strong regional sales. This tactic, along with the need to update the multitudes of smaller breweries the company had purchased, many of which had been poorly maintained, struggled with inefficiency problems and slumping sales since Prohibition, led the company to bankruptcy and dissolution in 1972. At this time the company and all of its assets were sold to G. Heilman of La Crosse, Wisconsin. G. Heilman Brewing Company As with Pfeiffer, Heilman purchased smaller struggling breweries with regional bases, and again Schmidt's Brewery was one of many in a vast beer empire. The brewery though ran at near capacity while it severed under Heilman and rivaled the La Crosse Brewery, in efficiency. Along with its own brand the brewery brewed Heilman's flagship brand Old Style, as well as Blatt's, Grain Belt and Howenstein. By 1981 Heilman was the fourth largest brewing company in the country. Still without a nationally recognized brand it was vulnerable to competition. In 1987 the company was the victim of a hostile takeover by corporate raider Alan Bond. Alan Bond had built his empire on junk bonds and when they crashed he lost everything. Heilman became a casualty of the largest financial collapse in Australian history. In 1990 production on the site would cease for the first time since 1855. The Minnesota Brewing Company In 1991 a group of local investors reopened the brewery under the name of the Minnesota Brewing Company. 
With the reopening of the brewery, a contest was held to name the flagship beer for the brewery. The two names with the most votes were Landmark in first and Pig's Eye in second, the former for the brewery's iconic status in the West St. Paul neighborhood and the latter for the man credited with founding St. Paul. It was at this time that the iconic Flashing Schmidt's sign that had long spanned the catwalk connecting the grain silos and the brewery's tower was removed and replaced with the non lighting, landmark sign. Landmark beer was met with little success, and in 1992 the brewery released Pig's Eye Pilsner to much affair. It was at this time that the company started to revitalize the Grain Belt brand, and began contract brewing for many small independent companies, including Pete's Wicked Ale, one of the first craft brewers in Minnesota. The brewery saw some success in the mid and late 1990s, running the brewery at almost its capacity of 1.2 million barrels per year. The brewery was also able to hire back employees laid off by Heilman's closing of the brewery who still needed work. Trouble found the brewery though and a combination of the brewery being too big to distribute just in the immediate area, but not large enough to distribute on a national level, outdated inefficient equipment, and the companies that contracted through them sometimes going out of business leaving the brewery full of vats of unpaid for beer as well as labels for said brands, caused the brewery to shut down for good in 2002. Gopher State Ethanol In 2000 the Gopher State Ethanol Company began production of industrial-grade ethanol on the site of the Minnesota Brewing Company. This proved to also be an ill-fated venture as the noise and smell produced during the production process of ethanol became the aim of neighborhood organizations that petitioned to stop production at the plant. In 2004 Gopher State Ethanol closed its doors and again the brewery lay idle. <laughs> Schmidt Artist Lofts Minnesota-based developer Dominium has purchased the site of the former brewery and as of 2012 has begun the renovation of the buildings to be turned into an artist community complete with studio space for the artist. As of January 2014 the former bottling department has been converted into lofts and is available for rental. While renovation on the main brewery building is yet to be completed Dominium has removed the landmark sign and has stated it plans to replace the old flashing Schmidt sign that once lit the West St. Paul night sky. On the evening of Saturday, June 21, 2014, as a focal point for the first annual German Fest, held on the grounds of the old Schmidt Brewery, the new Schmidt sign on top of the brewery was relighted for the first time. Several thousand people were in attendance for the event. <laughs> 